Hello, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Good to see you. Um, what, what, did you bring a drone for us? Brought a drone. To awesome. Show everybody. This is a um, Mavic Pro. Uh, kind of one of the more recent drones. Um, pretty fun little toy. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, th but that's the thing. These aren't really toys. These are, you've built up a business from the ground uh, since merged with another business, so we're going to get to all that. So, they can be toys for some people. We're looking at types of drones, but we're also going to talk to you about your business startup expansion, um, the acquisition by Precision Hawk, uh, and then we'll talk about the future of the drone industry, including some of the products that we've seen and all that. So I'm excited to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Sound good? To be here. Sounds great. Sounds good. Okay, why don't you just explain, because I'm going to be intrigued and staring at this all day. Explain to me what you have and why you brought this one in, because why not, right? <laughs> sure. Uh, so this is a Mavic Pro. Uh, it's a it's a drone, um, prosumer drone. Uh, probably a lot of people would refer to it as. Um, so it's uh, you know small enough and inexpensive enough where you're... Um, Typical drone user could afford it uh, and use it for you know things like um, you know capturing footage of themselves or um, events uh, and uh, other and also professionals could use it for um, you know, real estate um, weddings things like that. Uh, it folds up uh, pretty small. These wings fold in um, and you can toss it in a book bag and and uh, uh, it also follows you around and uh, it's it's a pretty pretty nifty gadget for sure. Is this kind of like a starter, like a starter drone almost? Um, it it is. Uh, it's it's um it's about a thousand bucks. Um, it's by DJI, which uh, you know they've been really pushing the envelope lately with drones. Um, so even though uh, it's small, it's relatively cheap. Um, you you know you might think of it as a starter drone, but it's really packed with a lot of features, uh, which makes it makes it uh, perfect for a lot of different uh, scenarios. Kind of a. Uh, an up a notch from a starter yeah, drone, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, it looks, not only does it look cool, but it sounds like it has a lot of capabilities to it yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so if you don't want one, and if you had no idea what the drone industry was like, just seeing this makes me want to be like, okay, I need to get my license, <laughs> right? All right, let's talk a little bit about your company. Um, you're not a stranger to startups, and Droners.io was featured in Wired, Forbes, a lot uh, you've gotten a lot of publicity over the years when you built this up. Recently, Precision Hawk, a commercial drone and data company, acquired your company, uh, as well as another one, to launch the world's largest network of commercially licensed drone pilots, around 15,000. Talk to me about why you decided to merge with this company, why you made that decision, and why was it the right time? Or was it the right time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, to answer that question best, uh, uh, I can start out with um, you know where the product has uh, has evolved over the, the last two years, and I think that will uh, provide a lot of uh, background and insight sure. to uh, to this this recent move. Um, so uh, for everyone out there that uh, is still wondering what Droners is, uh, we are a marketplace that connects uh, individuals and companies with uh, licensed and professional drone pilots. Uh, so if you're a real estate agent or a uh, wedding uh, videographer or um, uh, you want to throw a big party with your friends uh, or if you're uh, a large construction company, uh, a utilities company, um, an insurance company, uh, we, we connect you with uh, drone pilots. Uh, so uh, we are uh, an Uber for drones, if you will. Uh, so before the idea for Droners came around, um, I had spent the last decade or so building uh, um, uh, web companies uh, are taking ideas uh, for other companies to market. Uh, a lot of those uh, companies were uh, online social communities or two-sided marketplaces, which uh, is what Droners is and uh, uh, those types of business models. Um, so uh, how I got the idea was I was out kite surfing with, with some friends and uh, a buddy uh, with his drone uh, captured footage of me and uh, I thought it was that was amazing, uh, and so I you know, tossed it up on Facebook, and everybody was uh, raving about how awesome it was, asking if it was from a helicopter, uh, and no, it was just it was from a drone like this, and uh, so that really got uh, you know me thinking about uh, you know how much would it would it cost to hire a, a drone pilot, and how difficult is it to to find a drone pilot to to get footage like that, and so. 
uh, I started looking around online and on Google and, and uh, um, surprisingly it was actually quite difficult to, to hire a drone pilot. Um, you couldn't actually just you know, pay the kid down the street $10 to, <laughs> to come shoot your house. Um, at that time, uh, to, to, to capture drone footage for someone, to, to use your drone commercially, uh, you actually had to have a private pilot's license. Uh, you just, you know, you couldn't just go, you know, professionally fly your, your drone. You actually had to be a, a real pilot. Um, so finding someone that had that, that license, um, if, if you were gonna, you know, uh, acquire your footage legally, uh, was difficult to do. Um, there's also uh, insurance needs. So if you are, uh, you know, a big real estate uh, agent or you're an insurance company uh, and uh, someone flies their drone through, you know, the window of your building uh, or it falls out of the sky and hits someone, um, that, that's a pretty big deal. Um, so I instantly saw that there was a huge need uh, for a service to create, uh, for a service to connect uh, individuals and companies with drone pilots. Um, so I, I took the idea and ran with it and uh, uh, launched the first version in two months, um, August 2015. Uh, and uh, like you said, we immediately um, was picked up by a lot of press and um, uh, we, we grew significantly in the first two years. Uh, so that led us to, um, to your question about uh, this recent acquisition. Um, so the end of two, 2017, we, were, um, we had felt that we really dominated the, the space on the SMB side, small business side, and, and um, consumer side. So connecting people, uh, real estate agents, things like that. Um, but we were still trying, we, we still hadn't really solved the problem of uh, the enterprise space, which is... Um, if you're a insurance company um, and a hurricane hits Florida and you all of a sudden need 10,000 aerial roof inspections, um, how do you how do you do that? And so we we were leaving uh, um, a large piece of the pie on the table by by not uh, being able to um, really uh, uh, target that that market yet. Um, so uh, about the time that um, Precision Hawk. Uh, approached us was also the same time that we, we are starting to solve that problem. Um, so it was, it was perfect timing. Um, and so to your, to your question about uh, how that came to be and, and what does it mean for us, uh, so Precision Hawk, um, they are a, a drone company in North Carolina. They're, um, they're a global leader in enterprise drone services. Uh, so they have uh, uh, some of the largest enterprise clients in the space um, uh, already. Uh, they've been working with them for years, um, uh, large uh, agriculture companies, um, oil uh, companies, um, construction companies, yeah. um, just the, the whole spread. And so the problem that they were trying to solve, which was the same problem we were trying to solve, is how do you deploy drones at, at large scale and in a short notice? Um, so they approached us, um, and it was very clear from the get-go that we were uh, you know, the perfect match for each other as we were... Um, both, you know, needing to, to solve the same problem. Um, they were already experts in the enterprise space, um, and that's where we needed to go. Um, so it, it was a perfect match, and, and uh, they acquired us at the end of 2017. Interesting. Yeah, you just released this statement that the two companies were merging as well as another company. So how did you two, and you mentioned that you kind of were both working to solve these problems together and as you move forward, how do you see collaboration as you move forward in 2018 and then the future of this industry? Yeah, um, uh, so we um, uh, are, are uh, going to be leveraging um, all the infrastructure and uh, expertise that uh, Precision Hawk already has under their belt um, and, and, and their clients that are uh, very excited to, to hop on board as we scale up and, and deploy this, this um, this product, um, we already uh, um, have um, lined up um, to be handling a lot of the insurance claims um, uh, through a lot of the southeast of the United States. So anytime a big hurricane or a, a hailstorm comes this year, uh, it's going to be our drone pilots likely that are going to be wow. capturing those those drone inspections. Uh, so we've already queued up, um, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs already just through that through um, that acquisition and 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 the. Uh, uh, you know the sheer strength that they have in that space. Um, so it's it's um, it's going to be really exciting. We're already expected to scale well over a thousand x this year, and um, it's it's going to be very fast paced. 
So get your rest now while you can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I read this article in TechCrunch, which I thought was fascinating. Drone space fastest growth is set to come from businesses and civil governments, which you kind of talked about, who are expected to spend, this is the number, and I think it was from, given from Precision Hawk, $13 billion on drones through 2020. Um, and we talked a little bit, it was now kind of the right time to jump in on this. Precision Hawk just raised $75 million. Talk to me just a little bit about that, Elmer, $13 billion in the next couple years within the drone industry. Um, it's a huge amount. How do you see the future as you as you work toward this? I mean, I can see possibilities really endless. Um, but talk to me about that. How you foresee? You talked a little bit about insurance. You talked a little bit about storms. How do you foresee this growing and more other industries um, can pump money into drones? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think if you looked at the um, the vertical spread of like the largest verticals in that space that make up that that tremendous number that you threw out there. Um, the big players there are uh, infrastructure, so um, being able to um, uh, inspect cell towers, for example. One of our uh, one of our clients um, has thousands of cell towers across across the country. Wow. So uh, every year they, they need to inspect those towers, um, and there's literally uh, tens of thousands of them. Uh, uh, you have um, uh, um, utility poles and uh, um, power lines that have to be inspected annually. Uh, you have um, you know large uh, solar grid installations. You have wind farms. Uh, wind farms alone, I believe, is a six billion dollar industry wow. just inspecting the wind towers. Um, and then, like I said, touched on uh, insurance inspections. Um, there's you know hundreds of thousands of aerial uh, roof inspections that are going to be you know coming through the platform. Um, uh, so there's there's tremendous opportunities that a lot of people uh, I think frequently don't think about. Um, that drones are a perfect use for. Well, I can imagine this is probably a lot easier to use, navigate, if you're out inspecting a wind turbine, right? Out, out in the middle of the water than using manpower. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah. lot, a lot that, cheaper, a lot easier, yeah, a lot and, safer. And, right, exactly. And that, that's, a, that's a big thing, too, is it's a, it's a lot quicker and, and it's cheaper for, for the, the companies because they don't have to, you know, ensure a man, you know, climbing up a tower or putting, putting somebody on the roof. Um, they can safely deploy a drone quickly. Uh, and especially as uh, algorithms evolve, uh, you know, we're looking to develop autonomous, um, autonomous flight paths so that you, know, you click a button and, and it'll do the inspection of a tower or a roof or, or whatever it be, capture the data, and, and you're good to go. And so that also increases uh, efficiency of the process and all around a win-win. Wow. Uh, roads and bridges as well, you would think? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah bridges are, are uh, a huge piece as well. Yeah. Wow. Getting someone under a bridge to... To look at uh, you know hard to reach areas and uh, yeah very very big use case. I would think too you know you lose a drone yes that's a large investment but losing a drone versus a loss of life that's yeah you can't replace a person yeah, but you can replace absolutely. a drone easy yeah yeah much much easier <laughs> <laughs> much easier um, we talked a little bit about we talked a little bit about your background you went over that um, talk to us a little bit about pilots because when you see corporations come together and you see mergers, whatever the industry, whatever the business, is this beneficial for pilots who are certified, who are ready to work? Is this something good for them or is it going to leave pilots behind? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be honest, it can be, it can be both. Um, you've, we've seen models like this, um, uh, like for the, the cab industry, for example, uh, uh, taxi industry. Um, You've, you've read headlines um, uh, with Uber, for example, where they, they drive prices down significantly. Um, and so uh, if not done properly, it, it absolutely can, can drive an ecosystem where it's a race to the bottom and, and um, people who uh, um, you know, have uh, higher end skills aren't being uh, paid uh, appropriately. Um, and so that's something, uh, um, my background, I've built a lot of marketplaces and I've seen this firsthand and, and I've worked a lot in ensuring that uh, we are uh, providing ways to maximize value to both sides. Um, so that's something uh, that we're very aware of and uh, I would say is uh, a number one priority uh, is to ensure that uh, at scale we're still providing a, a, a mass amount of val value to the pilot. Because at the end of the day, if uh, good pilots don't want to work for us because uh, the prices are too low, then um, you know, those pilots start to become more of a, a liability versus an asset because we, we can't really um, you know, get the pilots that have the skills that we need. So um, it's, a, it's a big issue that um, uh, we, we have 
at the top of our list and uh, kind of planning to do it right. Well, that's good. Um, is this a good time, do you think, for people to get into? If they're excited about drones, they're excited about the technology, is this a good time to, to get into the business, do you think? I mean, we're starting to see more and more programs, more and more certification. Uh, QCC, I believe it is. Yeah, QCC in Worcester recently launched Massachusetts' first community college program to offer drone certification programming. So the knowledge, the awareness is out there. Is this a good time to get involved in the business, do you think? I think it is. Or is it too late? Uh, I think it is a good time. Uh, it's 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 um, you know rapidly growing. There's more and more companies every day that are adopting drones. Um, but that being said, there's there's also already a very large number of drones that uh, drone pilots. Uh, probably right now, about a month ago, there's 122,000 licensed pilots in the U.S. growing at about 25,000 a month. Um, so there's a large number of pilots already out there. Um, but also the, the, the demand is also increasing very fast. Um, but something to keep in mind though is um, it is a, you know, a service business like anything else. Um, you know, there's market rates and saturation and, and so uh, you know, pilots or people who are thinking they want to become a pilot, um, you know, they can't just go into it with the expectation that uh, you know, it's going to be this awesome job that they're, you know, they're going to kill it and make a ton of money. <laughs> um, it's just like anything else. You, you have to um, prove uh, um, um, your, your worth uh, and, and market yourself just like any other, other business. And um, so, it, you know, it's not easy, um, but it is uh, an exciting field that uh, is only going to grow. I definitely think we're going to see a lot. And I think it's so exciting to think of the possibilities in the future of these drones. Uh, did you watch the opening ceremonies at all? I did. Or read about it? Okay. Yeah, it was, so, I mean, this really it's not awesome. it's not really quite what you do, but along the lines, you're still using drone technology. So if you weren't able to watch opening ceremonies of the Olympics or read about it, um, Intel set a record flying over 1,200 of their shooting star drones simultaneously. So we've seen, I mean, and what they did was incredible, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, it looked magnificent. Um, I believe they made like a snowboarder and then they it transitioned into the Olympic rings. Um, talk to me just what the capabilities are out there, whether it's Intel doing that, whether we're looking at drones for, you know, or taking photography and all the industries that you said, whether it's for entertainment. Um, there was that story a couple weeks ago where someone was rescued, a water rescue. Mm -hmm. um, just as we look forward in the future of drones, is it just moving so fast that our brains can't keep up? Or, or what are your thoughts on the future of drone technology? Uh, so, so actually a, a big um, barrier I feel for uh, drone technology is actually regulation, um, uh, for good or bad, um, I feel for good. But um, uh, so currently, for example, um, you can't legally fly a drone um, out of visual line of sight, um, which means um, if you can't see the drone, you've flown too far. Um, uh, so. Uh, when you look at a lot of the technology that's out there, uh, in autonomous drone flying and, and things like that, um, being able to efficiency, efficiently use a drone, um, perhaps you know across long distances, um, you know a lot of that is uh, being met by um, by regulation, and, and so um, you know they're they're moving forward fast, um, uh, but um, they're doing it in a way to ensure that. Uh, drones are, are used safely, um, so you can't just, uh, you know, inspect a couple miles of pipeline um, autonomously um, every day by, by a drone that takes off and scans the pipe and comes back and, and there's no one there to, to uh, keep an eye on it. Um, I, I think in the very near future um, that that's going to be uh, legal, but, but right now um, there's, there's um, regulations in place that, that don't allow that. Um, just so, you know, so, just so that they roll out uh, um, rules that are effective and, and keep people safe. So it all it all depends on the future regulation. So that could either be a hindrance or could all help us stay a little bit safer. So we'll kind of see how it plays out. But definitely watch the clip of that. <laughs> those, yeah. those drones were yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it absolutely. was cool. <laughs> I'm sure absolutely. as a technology person, or at least working with drones, you probably thought it was. Really oh yeah. Exciting. Oh, and I'm a snowboarder as well. So. Oh, when I saw so that, you were I was really like, into what? it. They just did a butte crab by, by a drone. So. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. It's like so that that whole thing was, and then they had the drones like next to the, the snowboarders. I mean, the whole thing was just. It was pretty neat. So just incorporating that technology in our daily lives is that what we're going to see in the future? Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, 
uh, as drones, uh, you know, become safer in regard to um, uh, not only the, the, the hardware and fail safes of, of that, um, which you know, they've already made leaps and bounds in. Um, my, my, for example, my buddy's drone, uh, just, just a couple of years ago, uh, he lost two drones that just flew off into the ocean. So that isn't happening as much anymore. Um, so I think, uh, again, That's as regulations evolve, like for example, you, um, you can't fly drones above crowds um, yeah. unless, unless you're approved to do so. Um, uh, so as regulations evolve and, and more people are uh, meeting protocol and, and being approved to do things like that, um, you're gonna see it more integrated in our, in our day-to-day lives for sure. Great. Dave Brown, thank you so much for joining me today. Founder of Droners.io, now part of Precision Hawk. You can find more on their website, which we'll have a link to all this information and much more on golocalprov.com. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a true pleasure. Really appreciate appreciate it. it. Keep us updated on everything that's happening. I definitely will do so. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.